I want to thank our sponsors, Athletic Greens, who created AG1, one of the most innovative packets of supplements, including 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. These ingredients support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. I personally started using Athletic Greens and love the way I feel in the morning after I drink it. And I no longer have energy crashes throughout the day. And the best part is that it's delicious. The founder of Athletic Greens created AG1 because he experienced a ton of gut health and ended up on a complicated and expensive supplement routine to recover. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Yasmeen. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Yasmeen, Y-A-S-M-E-E-N, to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hi, my name is Yasmeen Tarehi, and this is Gateways to Awakening where we host one-on-one conversations with leading experts in wellness, well-being, and spirituality. Today's episode is about how changing your beliefs and your subconscious programming can change your life with Lauren Sedbun. Lauren is a mindset coach who uses her unique take on subconscious reprogramming to help people shatter their limiting beliefs and create the life of their dreams. She specializes in working with creative entrepreneurs, business owners, and individuals that want to make a massive impact on the world. Lauren's background gives her work a unique perspective that creates harmony between applied psychology, spiritual concepts, and practical steps for changing your life. And her coaching company, Think Manifest, uh, offers three-month transformational coaching programs for people ready to take their life to the next level. And you can also check out Lauren Sedbon on YouTube, where she currently has a community of almost 10,000 plus subscribers. And that is actually how I got to know her as well through someone that she coached. And that's someone that I grew up with really in my 20s in New York. So Lauren, thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Yasmin. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and one other thing I, I did not mention is that when Lauren and I actually had a kickoff call, I was so impressed by her ability to really understand the world of manifestation that I actually signed up for her three month course. So I'm now, <laughs> I'm now in uh, in the student seat in the course, and I'm just so delighted and excited to have her on the show to share her knowledge with us. So, Lauren, to kick it off, what is your opinion on how our thoughts are really impacting our lives? This is such a great question. And I think that it's one of the most underestimated aspects of what actually impacts our lives and what is the area we need to spend the most focus on is in fact, you know, what are our thoughts? What are our deepest beliefs? What are our, um, our feelings about certain topics? What are the stories that we constantly tell ourselves um, as we move through our daily life and as we try to achieve the things that we want to in this world? So to me, thoughts are probably the most important thing um, to spend focus on and, and time on. And that's why I spend so much time on it with my clients. And, uh, you know, it is essentially a mindset program. How can we actually connect with our own voice and really discover that authenticity of what is it that we really desire and, and what do we want and, and how can we align our thoughts with that? That's a really great question. And I think that um, one of the most difficult parts of this process is first learning to hear yourself. First learning to understand like, where do you end and others begin, right? Where where is the separation between you and others? And what are actually your thoughts and your beliefs and your wants and your desires? And what are the thoughts and beliefs and wants and desires of the people around you? And as we go through day-to-day life and we've been programmed over so many years to want the things that other people want for us or to believe the things that other people have told us are worthy of believing, we can lose our sense of self. 
So I would say like if I could give one tip to the beginning of that journey to rediscovering yourself is uh, meditation. I think meditation and just silencing the mind and really seeing what's passing through your mind on a daily basis is probably the uh, easiest way to start to uncover what are you thinking and is it really you? Mm. And how long do you meditate and what's sort of the the sort of process of meditation? Do you just sit in silence for 10, 20 minutes? Um, do you do it morning and evening? What do you suggest people do if they're beginners? I think for a beginner, it shouldn't be about the time. It should be the level of depth and awareness that you bring to it. So I would say, you know, even starting with a minute to five minutes can be a massive difference for someone who's never been aware of their emotions and their thoughts. That can make a massive difference, even just a short period of time. But more about like being with the self. You see, a lot of the times we're really just avoiding the self. Um, we find ourselves like chasing after things or like uh, diving into our work or um, distracting ourselves with relationships. And so we're kind of avoiding the self. In meditation, it allows you to actually sit with the self and look at the self. And honestly, in the very beginning, that can be very hard for people. Uh, I find if someone really doesn't want to meditate, they probably need meditation the most because they're <laughs> avoiding the self the most. Right. And I love uh, that you speak about these kind of ranges of those who completely abandon the self and then those who maybe over-identify with the self. And so uh, that to me is really fascinating. Can you talk to us about what that means and how that manifests in the in like the day-to-day -day real world and especially in relationships? Yeah. I think that, um, you know, to really have like a satisfying life, one where you don't feel like you're living for other people, you have to be able to really hear yourself and, and be able to identify with the things that are important to you specifically. And I think that we lose a lot of that. And then I think that there are also people who are highly identified with the self so much so that they don't recognize others. And um, so I would say that that's, you know, more about coming to a balance. Um, in general, I would say that most people that I work with tend to not be able to hear themselves well. And, and it's interesting because they may even think that they do identify with themselves well or that they do know who they are at the beginning. But as we go through our clarity exercises, and maybe you can speak to this as well, you, you get to understand that there's actually a deeper level of self um, than what you thought was there to begin with. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so it's interesting, Lauren, when I started this program with you, I think I felt like I had a very clear understanding of self and very rooted in self. And then I think as a, you had a list of questions, it was actually like endless amounts of questions, um, questions that I had not actually thought about uh, in my life, some of them. And I think once I started to answer them, I thought, well, you know, I definitely have goals. I definitely have maybe like year long goals. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it comes to even my five-year goals, I felt like I was playing too small. Uh, and it's so funny because I, people, I think in my circle, um, wouldn't agree with that. It just feels like I'm, you know, living an incredible life, but it still feels like whatever purpose I'm here to do, the, the mission and vision is actually way larger than anything I can actually wrap my head around. So, um, that was really fascinating for me. And I think, I think that there's also kind of a, a disconnection to self when you start to really investigate how you're living your life and whether you're, I think you you use these words, but you're being pulled in the direction um, of your vision rather than reacting to life kind of as it comes your way. So I'd love for you to speak about that in your, in your terms. Absolutely. You know, I think that um, our default mode is to just avoid obstacles and to move away from fears. Um, and just like kind of put out each fire as they come into our life and basically just react to everything that's happening in our life. And we're reacting to those things from our, our identity, who we think we are at a deep subconscious level, right? That's how we're perceiving this world. And so therefore what we react to emotionally is coming from that place. And um, we will really get trapped in that cycle unless we define a very clear direction of where it is that we're trying to go. So if we don't have a very clear and defined vision of where we're trying to go, it's going to be very difficult to navigate this now moment because, you know, all the choices presented to you, all the obstacles presented to you, they'll all seem equally important. 
right? So um, you won't know how to discern which option is more important, which way is the right way to go if you don't know very clearly where you're going. And beyond that, I personally think that the vision has to be three times, at least three times greater than the fear. Because if it's not much greater than the fear, then the fear will will win. It will pull you into the fear, it will pull you into the obstacle. But if the bigger, if the vision is both big and clear, then that vision will pull you towards it. And it will be much more easy, much more effortless to put your energy in the direction of what you're trying to create. And then of course, much easier to attain your goal and your vision. Right. And Lauren, I want to talk about the idea of identity and also self-concept. And why is that so important? Like, what does it actually mean to have a self-concept? And uh, can you give us an example of someone who had maybe um, a self-concept that changed quite a bit with your with your work and how they were able to manifest the things that they wanted with this new self-concept? It's a great question. And honestly, there are many levels to understanding the idea of identity, identity psychology or self-concept. Um, but, you know, on the most elementary level, it's that we all hold an image of ourselves within ourselves. So we all see our own selves a certain way, We kind of have like a visual representation of ourselves within our own mind. Um, and we are basically experiencing the world through that visual representation that we have in our mind of ourselves, who we think we are at a deep fundamental and subconscious level. And again, this is not on a conscious level. This is really like more on a subconscious level. Um, so we are operating through the world, through this identity. And the thing is that if you do not shift who you think you are, then all the actions that stem from this identity will either be in alignment with your goal or not in alignment with your goal. So if you want your actions to change and to be able to help you attain the kind of vision and goal that you have, fundamentally, the identity has to change and the way that you view yourself has to change. So really everything that we're getting in this world is a reflection of who we are, who we are at that deep subconscious level, who are who we are being at a deep subconscious level. What are we what is the state that we're embodying in any given moment? Right. And to really change the reflection of what we're receiving in this world, whether that's in friendships, romantic partnerships, uh, work environment, career, vision, life purpose, we have to step up in our identity to really match that which we, we wish to see reflected. And um, yeah, I would say that like to me, I've, I've delved into this field for many years. My background is in psychology. I did do a bachelor's in psychology and I was constantly searching for that, you know, secret sauce. Like, what is it? Like, how do we help people change their life? What is the, the, the easiest, fastest way to make massive shifts in people's lives and help them get the things that they want to? And to me, the secret is really in the self-concept. That's where, you know, if you work on that, if you put your energy into that, the amount of energetic return you get on that investment is just unbelievable. Whereas if you take your energy and just try to externally force and change things in your environment, um, the return is very low. So to me, that's always the best investment is to invest in yourself, invest in your mindset, invest in the way that you're viewing yourself and work on those things that potentially people are avoiding in self um, and uncovering those things and bringing awareness to those specific things that are allowing for their life to reflect back um, a picture that they don't really want to see, let's say. Um, right. And yeah, my clients have had amazing, amazing, amazing transformations with this. Um, you know, I'll just mention your friend, Shithal. Uh, there's an interview with her on my channel, which is great on the YouTube channel where you can kind of hear about her journey. So she does share this, but when she came to me, you know, um, she wanted to manifest a relationship that was very deep and connected. And she was having issues with that. Um, she hadn't met anybody and she also wanted to be in television. And that was something she always dreamed about. And she wasn't having much luck. Actually, she tried for five years and it didn't really seem to go her way. And really within shifting these concepts within the identity, within just a few months, everything came together. Really. She, um, got a role on that show, Indian matchmaking, 
you can see her on Indie Matchmaking Season 2. And she did amazing on that show. I really loved it. And she also found love in a beautiful romantic partnership that has that depth of connection that she was looking for, even though everything around her looked like it wouldn't be possible. She wasn't in a better position, let's say, than the average person. Um, you know, we all have those feelings of like what you want is not possible for you. So we can all really, I think, resonate with that idea. But as she made um, those changes in herself and she really did the work and she talks a lot about that, even on her own uh, social media, about really doing the internal work. Uh, that's what allowed her to really create this beautiful life for herself. Right. Yeah. It was so powerful. I really loved that conversation between the two of you. And I've also watched uh, many other conversations between you and some of the other clients. Um, there's one in particular also about a woman who recently divorced. Uh, maybe you could speak to that as well. And some of the other success stories, just, just to kind of root people in like, the process, like, okay, how did they change their mind about what was possible? Like, what were the pictures that they started seeing in their in their mind's eye? And and also this idea of the self concept and identity, is it is it one in which you see a picture of yourself, uh, or is it one in which you, um, you know, have to be be it? And I think that's for me the distinction that was really powerful. So I'd love for you to talk about that. I know there's a lot of questions in there, so feel <laughs> free to pick whichever one <laughs> resonated. No worries. So I'll start with Lori because Lori is a great example. Um, Lori is a wonderful person. She really made massive changes in her life, um, as she talks about in the interview as well on my channel. Everyone's welcome to check it out in detail because she's made such unbelievable changes in her life, changed her entire vision of herself and therefore changed everything that she got from in every area. She really up-leveled every single area of her life in an unbelievable way. Um, but what she says is the thing that helped her make the biggest shift was recognizing her own negative self-talk and realizing that um, the foundations of self-love were not as strong as she thought. And her um, perception of herself in this world was not as strong as she thought. And that there was a lot of negative self-talk and holding ideas in the mind that were opposing that which she wanted to create. And this is really the main issue is like, it's not that you won't face opposition in this world outside of yourself, but if in your own mind, right, this is your own mind, nobody else is in there except for you. If you're in your own mind and in your own body, you are divided within yourself, your energy is divided within yourself. Obviously that's not the best position to take, right? Right. So the way I see it is pragmatically, we need to always be in the best position energetically, like preserving and using our energy in the best way possible. And the best way to use your energy possible is to know very, very clearly where you're going and putting all of your energy, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, any kind of energy, your presence, your financial, uh, your finances, even every kind of form of energy that you could possibly have pointing it in the direction of the goal. So that requires deep clarity. And that also requires, um, creating unity within your own mind and being. Right. Right. And can you speak about your own manifestation with um, with some of the ways that you were able to kind of up-level your own, let's say, financial success? I'd love for you to, to really give us some case studies and also what worked for you, like what were the things that you were telling yourself? Um, and then, and then we can dive into those, the three themes that you speak about in your coaching practice. Sure. So, um, you know, for me growing up, I grew up pretty financially disadvantaged, uh, single mom, you know, um, made $28,000 a year and raised two kids on, on that amount. And so the idea of like having a financial abundance was very foreign to me for a very long time. Um, you know, I never really had more than like $500 in my bank account. So I really, you know, when I say that I, understand what it takes to change your financial situation and change your money mindset and start thinking uh, from different things. And that it is absolutely 100% connected to your identity and your beliefs about, let's say, finances, right? Um, and uh, so I really know what it is to come from that perspective. And um, I worked in sales for many years and I was always doing quite good in sales. I was, I was pretty good. I got good after a while and I started to see financial success, but it always felt like very hard work. It was very emotionally draining. It was very uh, difficult. It felt like so many things were completely out of my control that I was just waiting 
for something to go my way. And it felt like I didn't really have control over my finances and I didn't have control over the way that things would go. And this was like some years ago now, probably like close to six or seven years, maybe more. I discovered the concepts of subconscious reprogramming and overcoming my own limiting beliefs. And at first I really didn't believe in it, to be honest. I I was a very skeptical person and I was extremely empirical minded and I didn't believe in anything woo woo or spiritual whatsoever. And, um, I was like, okay, let me, let me try this out. Let me be truly empirical and truly empirical means that you don't judge something as whether it's true or not, whether the subconscious reprogram overcoming the limiting beliefs would work or not. Let me just try it and see what the results are. And if the results are good, then obviously I'll go with that. And I tried it out. And, you know, within two weeks of spending a lot of time and attention on reprogramming my subconscious, pulling apart my belief system, really looking at what do I tell myself on a daily basis? What am I uh, consuming in my environment? What am I reading? What am I watching? Who am I spending my time with? really looking and and pulling that apart like piece by piece and then spending tons of time being aware of those things and reversing those things. I literally, within just a few weeks, that next month, I tripled my income and I halved my work. And that was something that just really blew my mind. And once I realized that, I was like, okay, this is the field of study I want to be in. Wow. Wow. And, uh, and so I'd love, um, for you to talk about how psychology, like your, your experience in actually both sales and psychology kind of helps you as you move through this, this world. I mean, you you briefly spoke about it in this last example. Um, how does having that kind of worldview help with the world of manifestation? Absolutely. So I think I uh, I think I fell into a trap for about you know a decade that a lot of people fall into, which is the consuming knowledge, just constantly consuming like new methods, new techniques, new ways of thinking, um, and thinking that that is going to get you some kind of change. But actually, that doesn't get you any change. What gets the change in your life is who are you being. Not what do you want, not what do you know. The answers are not out there somewhere. Um, The answers are all actually within you and you can start practicing being the person who would have the things that you want to have. Now, I think like where my psychology background took me, this is psychology in, in, in one form, but psychology is a lot about understanding the other person's frame of mind. I would say. And a lot of psychology studies about like, what does the other person think? How do I maneuver around what they want or what they're thinking? Or, you know, how do I appeal to them? How do I get approval from someone? Right. That's a lot of um, like psychology in the realm of, let's say, sales or any kind of achievement. But what really shifted it for me was when I realized that actually there's only one thing you have to be worried about. It's not what other people are thinking because you can't know what other people are thinking. It's about what are you thinking, right? You can't change what someone else is thinking or what they're feeling. So knowing what they're thinking and feeling is kind of not the best use of energy. Best use of energy would be to know what you're thinking and feeling and really tightening that up first. That would be number one priority, right? So once I made that shift in my uh, thinking a lot of pieces of the puzzle of how do we actually get results started to come together for me and start to come together in my practice and how I work with people. So we really focus on the things that you can control, which is self, right? It's self. That's all you really need to control. All other things are, are influenced by your own relationship with yourself. Right. Right. Uh, so powerful. And then what about like for people that have deep kind of subconscious beliefs that are not serving them? How would you go about helping them deprogram those beliefs? Great question. So I think something that has to be mentioned here that is never really talked about, I almost never hear people talk about it, but your subconscious beliefs are not really beliefs, like they're not thoughts, okay? Um, Thoughts are like the noise from your subconscious beliefs. Well, there's two types of thoughts. There's your unconscious thought, right? And then there's your conscious thought that came from you and you decided to think it. But then, you know, the majority of thought is unconscious thought. And that unconscious thought is noise, okay, from your subconscious beliefs. And what are your deep subconscious beliefs? Well, they're your feeling states, actually. They're in your body. 
they're not really in your mind, like uh, the way that people think about beliefs. And that's why so many people have such a hard time reprogramming themselves because they're just trying to reprogram their thoughts on a very surface level. And they don't realize that it's actually, what do you feel about things? That's what you truly believe, right? That's what an assumption is. And Neville Goddard talks about the law of assumption and that what you assume to be true will be true for you in your world. Well, that's what he's talking about. It's what are you feeling to be true? He also said feeling is the secret. The reason he said feeling is the secret is because the subconscious mind is the feeling state. So um, I think that the starting point is awareness. To me, number one is always awareness, awareness of what are you thinking, because it's the best indicator of what you're feeling. Um, it's the best like barometer for what, what feeling state you're in. And then working through those feelings and actually doing things to improve your feeling state. Mm. Yeah. And Lauren, I love that. And also, um, if you're in, let's say a story that you don't like, or let's say you're in a situation that you don't like, uh, I love when you talk about how we should not give that importance. Like, even if it feels like things might not be flowing in the way that we hope they would be, for example, um, to not give that kind of outside exterior perspective, any kind of, uh, weight, uh, in your inner world. And, and, you know, you use, you use that language with, when we had this conversation, uh, before, um, in one of our coaching sessions. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what that means. Like, what do you mean by don't give weight to the external world? Yeah. Great question. Um, you see, it's all perception. It's all your perspective. Everything that you're experiencing as good or bad, preferred, unpreferred, it's all through perspective. There really is no good or bad. Everything is actually neutral, right? From the highest perspective, everything is just neutral. So um, when we give weights to things and we judge them, right? When we pass judgment on things as good for us or bad for us, first of all, we don't know all outcomes. So we can't know if something is good for us or bad for us, right? It's a very limited perspective. And second of all, the more that you give weight to the things that you don't want, um, you just make them bigger, right? Because you're just feeding your energy into the unpreferred situation. So I would say like, uh, you know, in manifesting, we say like your circumstances don't matter because your circumstances are to a certain degree an illusion of your identity, okay? And if you change your identity, those circumstances will either fade away or new solutions will appear, or new people will come in and help you, or and, and all these um, uh, random chain of events, a bridge of incidences, as Neville Goddard calls it, will come in to help you get to the outcome, your desired outcome. But if you stay by giving your energy to the old identity, if you stay by giving your energy to the circumstances that you don't want, the problems on the outside that you don't want, then you will stay in a vicious cycle and you'll never be able to break that cycle and move uh, ahead. And, you know, this is an area I'm really been fascinated with my whole life. I was really interested in like, why do some people stay in cycles for decades? Why does that happen? And there must be a better way to help these people. And, um, and it's because we remain chained to the old stories that we have. It's because we remain chained to the old uh, feeling states that we have. And we're taking what we see through our perspective, which is not the reality, through our perception, we're taking it as truth. And we are playing into that again and again. And so the cycle can never really break until you break that cycle from within. And why is it so hard for so many people to, to, to shift, to like make those kind of deliberate changes? Does it, does it take like, you know, a lot of effort? I mean, what is, can you talk to us about efforting in this process? It's really not an effortful process. Um, you know, there's a reason my program is three months. I really believe that that's the amount of time to, you can make unbelievable massive shifts in your life in three months. Um, if you put deliberate practice and deliberate intention into that shift, you can literally have a completely different life um, or at the very least be on a completely different trajectory, which would change the trajectory of the next years and decades of your life. So it's not hard. It doesn't take a long time. As a matter of fact, I see people shift within weeks um, with big, massive changes happening within two to three months. So, you know, um, it's not hard. It's very simple. Okay, it's very, very simple things that you need to do. You just need to actually know what to do, 
and do them, not think about them, not read about them, not watch about them. I think a lot of people, uh, the, the reason a lot of people have trouble getting results, and I'm sure you can attest to the way that I run my program, it's a bit different than a lot of courses is because people get very caught up in a knowing trap. They want to know and know and know, and they want to believe that the solution is out there somewhere. It's not. It's how are you mastering this moment right now and right now and right now and right now, right? So every time you master this now moment, you are literally moving closer to the desired outcome. The more you think about it, read about it, want about it, the further you are away from it. So I don't think it's harder. I think it's like a misunderstanding of what is the work that needs to be done. And, um, and then of course, you know, having someone able to like bring that awareness to you and, um, point things out from an external perspective, because sometimes it's hard to see the self. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so I I have this, like, uh, I don't know why I'm going back to this time when I was in New York, like over 10 years ago. And I think I was doing this work kind of unconsciously because of this track that I used to listen to by Deepak Chopra. And he, it, it actually said, I will judge nothing that occurs. And I actually made a promise to myself for one year that I would not engage in any kind of negative talk towards others or myself. And I really committed to that. And it was so interesting how I literally shifted into a completely different life found myself working in tech. I moved to San Francisco from New York and then, you know, had this massive creative life uh, 10 years after. But it's so interesting because at the time I didn't actually know what I was doing. And then of course I fell back into, you know, negative talk and all that uh, at periods of my life. But, um, but, you know, that kind of level of commitment, you talk a lot about commitment in your program. Um, and I'd love for you to, to tell us like, why is commitment so important? Actually, you have like three core themes when it comes to the manifestation process. So, um, if you could talk to us about all those themes and in particular, why commitment is so important. Sure. So I just want to touch on what you said about, um, you know, the non-judgment and why it's so powerful to not judge. Because like I was saying before, our perspective of what's happening is very limited and it's very small. It's like very like, um, it's from thinking like, I want this specific outcome and this specific outcome is not happening. So I'm going to judge this scenario as bad, right? Um, And what judgment actually means is that you don't have trust, you don't have faith. And you're you don't have faith in your outcome. You don't have faith in yourself. Um, and that's why you have to judge this situation as good or bad. If you have a, a much more higher perspective, like, um, you know, a faith-based perspective or a spiritual perspective, then um, you understand why allowing is so important. Because uh, allowing, number one, it conserves your energy. Number two, it's saying that, okay, I don't have all the information. I don't know all the outcomes but I trust that this situation will resolve in my favor. And that allows you to take all of that energy from worrying and stressing and judging and um, take it back and put it in the direction of the goal, which means you'll get where you're going so much faster. Um, And then on the topic of commitment. So, you know, I think one of the, this is like more recent for me, I would say in the last year, one of the aspects that I, really undervalued when it comes to our identity is our character traits and what traits are we actually displaying so our feeling states are very important because that's our deep subconscious beliefs but our character traits is how we will react to any given scenario it's how we are going to maneuver right you know that saying like how you do one thing is how you do everything right so um to me commitment is us decide. So there's a couple things. There's clarity, there's commitment, and there's decisiveness, right? But let's look at clarity and commitment for, for a second. Clarity is like we said, like creating that very strong vision of where you're going and what you're trying to create. And when you are not committed, even if you have a very strong vision, but you're not committed, well, you're going to constantly not know what to do in any scenario in the given moment. So you won't know if something is right or or not right. You'll be maybe kind of in confusion. So commitment is kind of like cutting off all other avenues, cutting off all other options, because all the options are available to you. In this world, you can find anything that you want. You can create anything you want. All the options are available. But when you commit to 
your vision or commit to a certain direction, that means that even if things come up along the way that are the opposite of that, you're not going to falter. You're not going to change your direction. You're going to stay in that direction. And that is pivotal to getting your goal. So I think whereas in the past, I underestimated the importance of these characteristics, I would say that now that is probably at the the top of the importance Uh, because you can be so talented, you can have um, everything going for you. But if you do not have the right, if you've not developed those aspects of your persona, you will have a very hard time getting where you're going. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think that's so so fundamental to this, this piece, uh, this, you know, clarity, clarity first and then commitment. Um, and, and even just the, the character piece, I think all those things, it, you know, when you, when you actually spoke about clarity for me, um, that was really game changing because I tend to have like a very strong, like level of commitment to things, but not enough, you know, clarity for like the long-term vision of like where, what's the end goal? Like, where am I actually going to? So I think those two pieces together in itself just feel so transformational. So uh, Lauren, I'd love to talk a little bit about this concept of living from the end. What does that mean? Like, let's say, and can you give us an example, just like really rooted into a story of someone that used this concept, or you can even use a hypothetical? Yeah. So living in the end is a concept uh, coined by Neville Goddard. And um, he talked a lot about this uh, topic of reality creation. He pulled a lot from the Bible and reinterpreted the Bible in uh, ways to explain our divine power and how we can actually create our reality through our imagination. Um, And so, you know, living in the end is the idea that there is, if you can imagine your end and you can imagine what it would feel like to be in that end, living in the end means that you bring that feeling from the end into this now moment and you live in that feeling state that you would be at in the end right now. And that doesn't mean that you have to have the things that you would want to have at the end. Obviously, that wouldn't be the case because you're at the beginning, right? But you would bring and you would transport that state to the now moment and you would start being in that state um, even though you're not at that end. And that it is the state, basically, that attracts all the things that you want to you. It is the, the, the feeling state that you are in that finds the way. And I really believe that as well. I, I don't think... Uh, anything is really happening through logic in the mind. I think logic in the mind is an afterthought. It's an it's a process that happens after, and all things are happening first and being selected first through something much deeper within our being. You can think of it as soul or deep feeling state or anything like that. Um, and then everything is being kind of processed by the mind uh, as an afterthought. So. If you change the feeling state, actually, even though it's counterintuitive because everyone wants to do things through logic first, but if you change the feeling state first, actually the logic follows and the solutions follow, right? You've probably heard that saying like, um, you can't, you know, solve a problem from the same level of consciousness you were at when you created that problem or something Mm -hmm. like that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's the same idea. It's like you can't be the same person and come to a different outcome. So the most important thing is to change who you are being and who you are being is primarily and dominantly your feeling state. So Lauren, can you talk to us about an example of that? Like, so what would it feel like if you had that thing that you desired? Like, so what's an example of that? Yeah. So it really depends, you know, um, it depends where the person is at in their journey and how are they thinking about that thing? So there's there, to me, there's a couple of things that are, are, have to be taken into consideration. Number one is what is that person thinking about themselves and feeling about themselves? Like who do they think they are? Right. And then what do they think about that thing or that object or that end goal? And really it's all self, but the way that we think about it in a more practical terms is we think of us and other, like us and that other thing. Um, so, you know, in a practical way, you'd have to really break down, like, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Understand, like, who is the person who would have that thing? What is that person like? And then in everyday things that you do, you want to work at embodying that state more and more just being more and more in line with it. Maybe that means, you know, 
you're only an hour a day in the state that you want to be in. That's fine. Next week, maybe it'll be two hours a day. Next month, now suddenly, I don't know, you get your dream job. So you're working in your dream job full time. Month after that, you start saving money, right? So it's it's going to start, though, from the feeling state that you are that person and you can have those things. And so starting from that transformational state is what is going to propel all other circumstances moving forward, where as the way that most people think and why they can't get out of patterns and cycles is they're starting from the opposite. They're trying to change the circumstances to change their feeling. Right, right, right. Want the circumstances to change first. And that's just um, not the best way to go about it. Right. So, uh, so to give an example, like from one of the coaching clients that you had, like, let's say, you know, a person who desires a romantic relationship, they would actually feel, they would be feeling as if it already happened. So they'd be feeling as if their partner was already here. And if the job that they wanted, it would be feeling as if it was already done. Yes. And basically, you know, like a lot of people will talk about, um, let's say romantic relationships and feeling like there's no good people out there, or I don't know, a lot of limiting beliefs that people have about relationships, about themselves, about others, about, you know, dating. Um, there can be a lot of limiting beliefs that we have to unpack, for example, but, um, really, you know, it's about what do you want to feel in a relationship? Don't worry about what is being presented to you. You can opt out of all of that. You don't have to choose just from what's being presented to you. There are a lot more options than what's being presented. So instead of trying to like just choose the best from the situations that aren't the best in front of you, let's design what it is that you really are looking for. What is the feeling that you're looking for in a relationship? What is What would that feel like? And then by tuning into that feeling, you're going to attract people that match that feeling and intuitively you will know when something is not it. Problem is, if you don't know what it would feel like at your end, like I said, with, you know, being able to make decisions and commitment, you you won't know when someone is it or not. And so you'll waste a lot of time and energy in the wrong situation, the wrong friendships, the wrong uh, relationships, and um, maybe even the wrong jobs for what it is that you're trying to personally attain. Right, right. I love that so much. Uh, it really makes life more fun, right? When you feel like everything is not a slog, <laughs> that you don't have to, you know, push so hard against things that you desire, that it's just so easy. And uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. I find that even like the less I work, that, you know, the easier things move towards me. And and I think just the idea of, you know, putting people on a pedestal or putting something on a pedestal kind of repels it and pushes it away. Or even it's kind of like putting things on a pedestal or putting too much attention on it, even in the form of worry. Like, you know, both of those things I feel like exacerbate like pushing a pushing energy of the thing that you actually want. So, but it's so interesting because it's such a test of faith to just have neutrality towards the things we want. You know, then we want move through life with just a level of like confidence, like, okay. It's already mine. I have this. I have nothing to worry about. I'm safe. I'm secure. You know, I trust. I trust. And it's just, it's a really fun way to also walk through the day uh, to, to have that. Um, and yeah, and I, you know, I want to talk about something that you brought up in our one of our conversations about setting a, a big goal, like let's say, you know, creating your own company if you're an entrepreneur working on some entrepreneurial project. And you said to me, you know, it's not really about the the company. It's more about you. You are the company and and you're working out your character flaws while you're trying to achieve your goals. I love that point so much. And I'd love for you to talk about what you mean by that. Yeah. So, um, you know, part of my mission is really to help people overcome their limiting beliefs and their subconscious, you know, negative subconscious programming to help them share their gifts with this world. Um, I know that a lot of people that watch me and probably the same for you have very big dreams and visions of things that they want to accomplish and achieve. And what do they want to create in this world? And there are people, you know, who are maybe in line with the idea of purpose and passion and creative endeavors. So yeah, you know, I think that it's about really understanding that It is all self and everything that is coming from you and everything that you're creating is from self. So whatever limitations you're placing on yourself, they will obviously reflect out in your business, in your company, in your impact, in your creative endeavor. 
And whatever you resolve within self, that will also be resolved externally to you and all things from you. The way I see it is that, you know, you are like a battery and you are the source of all energy and all creation within your world. So you get to decide like who's around you and what you're going to put your energy into and how are you going to use and disperse your energy in a way to have the maximum impact. That's why I have to also be very aware of like who... Who are you giving your energy to and what ideas are you giving your energy? What circumstances are you giving your energy to? All things, because some things are like coils that will just push your energy further out in this world and push your influence and your impact further out into this world and help other people grow and and ascend further. And some people's circumstances, things, ideas, beliefs, stories are like black holes that will just suck up your energy and there will be no return on that energy. That energy just is gone, never to be seen again, right? So I think that I'm very, very big on really understanding, like, where is your energy going? Nobody has more energy than somebody else. We all have the same amount of energy. People talk about it like time, right? Like, oh, we all have the same amount of time in the day. It's not even about time in the day. It's about, like, what are your processes and systems? Where do you put your your energy in your own mind? Where do you put your energy in in your daily life? And are you putting them into things that will maximize your life, your impact, your happiness, the well-being of others? Or are you putting it into things that would do the opposite of that? Mm, Right, right, right. Fascinating. And yeah, and I think the output of where someone is in their life is really a direct kind of transparent indication of where they've put their energy and time, you know? So uh, not time, but their energy specifically. So Lauren, I'd love to know, why do you think this subject is so important and why did you decide to dedicate your time to this? It's a really great question. Honestly, this is a topic that I'm, you know, have been, it's just been ingrained in me my entire life. I remember listening to Tony Robbins when I was like eight years old and reading books on psychology when I was 12 years old. I've always been very, very fascinated with um, personal development and human growth and psychology and mindset and uh, later on spirituality and spiritual practices and what is, does it really mean to live a amazing life? Um, I've been very interested in self actualization for a very long time. I think that I felt very out of place when I was younger and wanting to study music and a lot of people tell me that that would have been a waste of time. But to me, it was very meaningful and very important. And I, I feel like what I try to do is be the, um, the voice that I didn't have maybe growing up. Like even though my parents were supportive, I felt like society was not really in line with the things that I was interested in. And um, even like when I was in psychology, I felt that I didn't really meet the minds that had similar viewpoints that I did. And they weren't really talking about the topics that I was really interested in, like consciousness. So to me, like this is the work that I want to contribute the most in this area, because I think that it can have unbelievable impact in other people being able to share their gifts and um, really feeling the confidence and the ability to step into their personal vision for life. I think that so many people have so many amazing and unbelievable things to share with this world, unbelievable talents and gifts and music and art and acting and consciousness and business and um, and in, in, in innovation. And because we get so programmed so young, uh, people doubt themselves and they doubt their vision and they don't think that it's possible for them to succeed in that. So they go with what they think is safe. And that always leads to unhappiness. That always leads to unfulfillment and um, not feeling like your life is purposeful. It's just a matter of time. And so I want to help people avoid that. And I want to help people really fulfill their greatest uh, potential in this life and help bring to this world all of these great inventions and ideas and innovation that otherwise might never be uh, fulfilled. Yes. Yes. I love that so much. And uh, for those of you who are new to Lauren, definitely check out her YouTube channel. I'm so excited for folks to listen to everything that you've shared and more. It's just, it really was mind boggling for me and had a lot of ahas. So Lauren, what do you want to tell our listeners about their wellness and health and well-being? What's sort of your main takeaway? What, you know, and what's next for you? Yeah, I think that I would like to tell everyone that, you know, 
Um, your personal well-being is going to be based on how actualized you feel in your life. And um, a lot of people like experience so much negativity, so much feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, um, you know, maybe depression, anxiety, feeling bad about themselves generally, um, or feeling like they can't do the things that they want to do, have the things that they want to have, or that life is somehow limited for them. And this really impacts both your health, your mental wellness, and just your overall like happiness in life. You know, to me, it's not about just like living like an okay life. It's about having like an unbelievable, amazing life. Um, to me, that's the standard, <laughs> you know, not just feeling okay, but feeling like, wow, this, this life is amazing. And I can't wait to get out of bed and do something new and see what this world has for me. Right. So, um, if I could impart anything, it would be that you really to look at what are you consuming? What are you spending your time with, you know, mentally? What are you thinking within yourself about yourself? And are you really like being there for yourself in the way that you want the world to be there for you? And, um, and believing yourself in that way. Mm, amen. I love that. <laughs> Lauren, thank you so much. And where can people find you? Uh, what's the link to your YouTube channel? Yes. So you can look me up on YouTube. It's Lauren Sedbon. And uh, also you can go to laurensedbon.com. And right now I have my three-month life transformational coaching program for people who are really ready to take their life to the next level, who are really ready, they know that they have things that they've been putting off and they're ready to really jumpstart their life in all areas. This is a 360 program by working through the self-concept and mindset. And of course, people can join me and watch my YouTubes, which I put out weekly on different topics on mindset, psychology, and manifestation. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Lauren. Really, really appreciate this. And we'll have to have you back on the show after the three months and um, talk about uh, all the sort of things that have been manifested after the three months and also how my mindset has changed. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't wait. Awesome. So for our audience, thanks for joining and for listening. In, in this episode, we learned about how to manifest the life of your dreams by overcoming your limiting beliefs and reprogramming your subconscious mind with Lauren Sedbun. And you can tune in to Gateways to Awakening, where we host one-on-one -on -one conversations with leading experts in wellness, well-being, and spirituality. Thanks again.